Welcome to oh. B-Roll, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, all this is being recorded. This movie's gonna flop. My mind's about to pop. But enough of that noise. Time for the B-Roll, boys. <laughs> What's up? We're coming to you live from the distant future of 1995. Once what? again. What? <laughs> this is the future. <laughs> This is 1995. I don't think that's true. That's it's 100% true. I really don't think that's true. I think you're did lying. You not, I think this is a not, ruse. You didn't fact check this before we started? Obviously, you know, it's a little unrealistic. 1995 is really far away. When was this actually set? It was like 2187. 2139. It's 21-something. Oh, we could have wow. mega-manned it and put like 20XX or something like that. Fuck Judge Dredd. <laughs> okay, anyway, it's me, it's your boy, Wes, and uh, today I'm joined by my boys, Harlan. What's up, Harlan? Hello, Harlan. <clears throat> Justin, what's up? <laughs> Fuck Judge Dredd. I don't see why you're hating on us so much. You guys said this wasn't the most boring picture. That it's I've not. Chosen. It's not the most so, boring. It's a low bar. But it's not like, <laughs> it's I mean, not the anything. prerequisite is we haven't watched anything, like, great except for Spy Kids, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, like, we... I, I tried to go against the grain and not pick something boring, so I picked something literally action-packed from beginning you to end. You tried you not guys... to go. You tried not to go with the grain of picking an action movie from the '90s, and you picked an action movie from the '90s. It's 2137. 2139. I'm glad you guys found out when this was set because I was lost. Even We're though like... in the in the distant year of 21XX, we still have cores and uh, what was the other one? Jack in the Box. Cores is an ideal that's going to last a lifetime. At least until 2137. Today we watched 1995's Judge Dredd. <laughs> oh, if, if, you, <laughs> if, if, you couldn't, if you couldn't discern that. Yeah, we, uh, we dived into Judge Dredd. It was magnificent. Um, it 100% drew from the source material in every loving way. Everybody loved it. It was a box office smash. I mean... Is this a roll, boys? Because I mean, <laughs> this this was pretty good, right? This is just a roll, boys. <laughs> Wes, why don't you give our audience a rundown of what the movie is is about, what it's like? Oh man, uh, this is my episode, and I wasn't prepared for that. But <laughs> so uh, we live in the distant future of 1995, aka uh, 2137. Right before uh, T2's date another for Judgment dimension. Day. All of the cops in the city are called judges because they are judge, jury, and executioner. They why, are is the he not, why is he not judge, jury, and also ed- executioner dread? Why is, he, <laughs> why is he just called judge dread? It's Actually, verbal that's... shorthand, Harlan. Don't be dumb. <laughs> Actually, that's a All good right. idea. Could you imagine a sequel, executioner dread? Like if no, he has to classes. be all three. He, he, like his name should be like they should be like, hello, judge, jury, and also execute, <laughs> fuck, executioner, dread. Or they Judicial could just strip dread. away all the titles and make in 2012 a gritty, ultra violent reimagining just called Dread, and it would be great. <laughs> oh wait, <laughs> what if we'll all the know. judges had like those colonial like white wigs with the curls on <laughs> instead of their helmets? <laughs> I feel like that wouldn't have feather. been any more. <laughs> yeah, that would have been any more ridiculous than the uh, the costumes they already had to wear. Their giant shoulder pads and boots. Any uh, guard yeah, that's, that's not that's what that's what really stuck out to me uh, when we started this movie. Um, I I have never read uh, anything with uh, with Mister Dreadful, um, but <laughs> the, this movie like screamed Lyfield to me. Um, for those of you unaware, uh, Rob Liefeld is probably most famous for um, uh, co-creating Deadpool, um, and he is uh, infamous for being terrible at drawing, um, especially like guns and feet. And yeah, the guns in this movie are just like re- they're comically oversized. Uh, this looks like a Rob Liefeld drawing uh, brought to life. Well, it's to emulate their thick cocks. <laughs> 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 Obviously, because this, everything is monstrous on on these judges. They got gigantic guns, <laughs> yeah. gigantic shoulder pads. Gigantic they can barely boots. fit through doors with these shoulder pads. It's unfucking real. 
and any of the guards, like the normal basic city guards that aren't judges, they look like Minecraft characters. <laughs> they they have like these block helmets and block shoulders. But um, thick boys. So the basic plot or I guess premise of this, of, you know, 1995's Judge Dredd, is, um, so it's 2137, uh, the outside world, I guess I don't really say exactly what happened, but you can pretty much infer that it was like nuclear war, as all these sci-fi movies are, and um, everyone's holed up in these mega cities, so in the entire US, everything is dead, pretty much, um, except for like two, Cursed, three. if you will. Yeah, it's called the Cursed Earth, and there's two mega cities. And then, like, a handful of prisons, like, in the middle, I guess. And it can, never can, shows can Mega I City st- 2. Can I stop you there? Yeah, what's well, up, man? They couldn't, they couldn't, the Cursed Earth? Like, they couldn't come up with a better name than that? Like, what? Is that not cool? I just had a really hard time imagining us, like, like, we just let climate change go on and on, and then are like, well, everything's fucked except for these small areas. What do we yeah. call the area that is, what do we call the area that is fucked? Uh, just like it's earth still it's the cursed earth i, I thought that was stupid <laughs> come on it's cool all right like while sure. we're sitting here just like we are now it's not that cool it's like shitty ver- it's like a shittier version of book of eli no it's cool like could you imagine us sitting here like we are now in our right. our, our various you know homes apartments and okay, we're like be sure. careful on the way to work harlan uh watch out for that cursed earth that wouldn't be cool you no. can just imagine saying that in normal <laughs> conversation. No, uh, that wouldn't be cool. I, I say be the opposite. Watch, cool. watch out for that cursed uh, virus. Anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> so, topical. This uh, whole thing takes place in Mega City One because we're not shown anything else except Mega City One and like the the outside of like the main gate and. This is the reality kicks, liberals want you to be in. <laughs> it kicks off the way you exactly want it to be, which is um, introducing Rob Schneider. So already this movie's at like an 11 out of 10, right? They're, Why uh, Rob Schneider? Like, you could have gotten literally bring... anyone else to be like the funny comic relief character. I'm pretty sure at this point... Yeah, 95, you could have brought in the dude that played Jar Jar. You could have brought in <laughs> Saddam Hussein fucking anybody other than rob schneider <laughs> or had anyone else from saturday night saturday night live that was way the fuck funnier than rob schneider i wonder what george bush was up to while this was being filmed that's true george bush could have been <laughs> rob schneider's part that would have been cool <laughs> when's rob schneider in smash god and there's like i guess describing the plot there's not really a whole lot that ties rob schneider to it either because we we like Okay. examines this this whole film his yeah. only purpose that i was able to come up with was like for 20 seconds when he hacks that one robot and everything else is 100 percent useless yeah we're, we're jumping ahead a little bit here but yeah like at at some point near the end of the movie i was like well like about halfway through the movie i was like why did rob schneider and sylvester stallone team up like, I don't understand why these two characters have decided to work together. That doesn't really make any sense. And then later, like, they're still working together. The movie's almost over. And I'm like, you could take Rob Schneider's character out of this movie. And the only thing that you would need to change is uh, that, that part where he saves Judge Dredd by hacking the robot. And, like, I'm sure you could come up with another way to get him out of that jam. That's think- the only thing you would have to change. I think plot-wise, the reason that he's there is because Judge Dredd's a big, dumb dickhead that will, you know, be judge, jury, and executioner very, uh, very quickly, very (laughs) decisively without really weighing anything, so (laughs) he, uh, Judge Dredd finds Rob Schneider hiding out in this little, like, vendor robot R2-D2 thing that dispenses Zaxby's. And (laughs) cores. And (laughs) cores. Thanks, movie. Uh, the fucking shittiest light beer ever. But anyway, so, and basically gives him like a five year sentence, even though he was originally being taken prisoner by these thugs that shot at Judge Dredd. And he's like, hey, man, I, I need a new trial, man. Like, I'm innocent. I'm the law. And then he sentences him. I knew and then you'd when, say that. And then when <laughs> Judge Dredd gets wrongfully convicted of a crime of his own, he gets stuck on the 
bus going to the prison, I guess, with Rob Schneider. He's like, hey, I remember you, man. You're the one that fucked me over. I thought the law was never wrong, man. His voice is really, like, I know it's just his voice, like his normal speaking voice, but it's just so grating. And so, yeah. I hate him. I couldn't <laughs> imagine what it'd be like to just hang out with him on set all day. Can you imagine what Adam Sandler feels like every day? <laughs> okay, so, so I, I'd like to back up a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, like you said, Justin, uh, Mr. Mr. Dreadful gets framed uh, for murder. <laughs> Joseph, <laughs> you mean Joseph Dredd. <laughs> yes, Joseph Dreadful. Um, and Sylvester so, Stallone. Played yeah, so badly. He so the 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 judges who are again essentially the police, uh, they get a trial, whereas you know citizens don't. Very very subtle, you know, kind of kind of commentary. Um, and he like in the trial they explain that like the bullets, uh, that that the judges shoot from their guns. Every time they shoot a bullet, the gun like takes a DNA sample and attaches it to the bullet so that they can easily like you know tell who shot the bullet. It's like coded and, uh, into the ammo. Yeah, like every time the gun is shot. So like there can be no mistake made, allegedly, um, ideally. Uh, and they explain, you know, like, oh, it's a DNA match for, for Judge Dredd. Uh, so he's he must have killed this innocent uh, person. Uh, he's guilty. And I want to know, uh, spoilers, it was his uh, long lost brother, I guess, that actually did the murder. <laughs> but I mean, they say that the DNA was a perfect match. For Judge Dredd. So, like, how did the... And the DNA on the bullet was, like, the crux of, of you know, the, the jury's verdict in his in his sentence. So, like, how did he frame him? I don't understand. Well, They're they have the same clones. DNA. They're like clones. But they, they don't have the same DNA. Like, they're not the same person. They look don't, exactly the same. Don't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> dumb, okay, dumb movie sorry. Logic. So, so like, yeah. Are, are, uh, excuse on. me. Do you live in 2137? That's what I thought. You don't know how shit works. It's 2139. Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, grunge was so over by then. Oh yeah. <laughs> Some dude pulled up. He was listening to White Zombie. <laughs> like, like literally, it was great. Yeah, in this Matrix Reloaded like version of the future. Which is in every single one of these stupid movies from this era is that everybody has to be cyber gods. Yeah, the entire city is cyber gods, and there's, <laughs> there's just random like, strippers. There's, yeah, there's always a stripper in like a really mundane place doing something just like really tame, like know? up high enough where she's not getting tips. But it's like, <laughs> who's well, getting tips? That wasn't a stripper. That was like a little rotating statue for a place. Like, well, yeah, but club. it was on the it was on the street. Does the city pay for it? Does our judge tax it's dollars like a, go to it's these It's like a streets? sign. Does the city pay for McDonald's to put up a sign? I'm pretty sure it was well, an actual person. Whose stripper is it? Are they like oh, the just futurist like like sign spinners? Doing what? Man, we it's are really like up advertising on the the, It's just advertising that the business exists. It's like any sign for anything ever. Which business? The fucking strip club. <laughs> strip I don't club. know. I wasn't there. Okay, well, it's not a very effective advertisement then, is it? <laughs> we're paying attention. You were too busy jacking off to Rob Schneider. Exactly. They need a little 15-year-old kid to spin a sign. A neon and, cyber goth sign. And every single uh, you know, cyber goth in here. Like that entire place is just an endless sea of trip pants and four loco. Like that's all this fucking cyber goth future is. It just litters the streets. <laughs> Yeah, instead of Coors, why didn't they have, like, a Four loco sign? Why wasn't it PBR? <laughs> it's just PBR what... neon signs Yo, everywhere. PBR is way higher class than Coors. I'll so just anyway, have to take your word for it. I honestly think that this is, like, one of... For 1995, this actually looks pretty good effects-wise. There's a couple oh, yeah. pretty surprised. gnarly parts, like the green screen chase thing towards the end looks kind of gnarly. Yeah. But the rest looks pretty good two years post-Jurassic Park. I'm okay with it. But the art direction is atrocious. Well, it just kind of skips around, because, like... I think most of the sets look super good. Like, a lot of the shit looks even better than, like, Blade Runner or something like that. You think but, the sets look good? Yeah, like, the beginning, the streets, the store that uh, Rico first went into, like, the pawn shop, all that's, like, pretty cool. I think um, outside, 
for the most part looks decent. It's it's pretty much like any time they're in like the government buildings, that's when it doesn't look. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the fucked the up sets thing. Didn't look super good. Anything involving the actual judges looks fucking looks stupid like and re- yeah, it looks yeah. stupid and ridiculous. But yeah, like everything else looks cool. It's like the yeah. judges are out of place, considering they're supposed to be like, you know, the end all be all. Yeah. The focal point of this movie, and then they look like like you said during this. West was like these look like Power Rangers. <laughs> They look like Power Rangers within, like, Minecraft. It's <laughs> so it's, like, absurd. skins. Like, they're all just so absurdly huge, and with these giant chrome shoulder pads, like, that barely fit through a door. The guns yeah. are enormous. Their boots are enormous. This is the 90s, man. I don't know when the, when no, the Judge Dredd started, No, it's 2139. This but... is the 2130s. Well, plus, right. Mega City 1 was like the remnants of New York, not fucking Texas. Not everything should be a, gi- <laughs> a giant version of itself. Um, something I was wondering. Uh, yeah, so like you said, Justin, he, he gets framed, and he's on the bus on the way to prison, and he happens to sit right next to Rob Schneider, of all people. And then, like, and then, That's you know... a very unfortunate bus ride. Yeah. And then, and then Schneider's like, hey, you're Judge Dredd! And then this prisoner's like, hey, hey, man... Uh, you you put me here. Wait I'm, a I'm minute. Gonna get, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get some revenge. And then he like tries to knife. Uh, he tries to like you know stab him in the throat. And then like some some you know like uh, rednecks. Uh, you know our kind of people out on the ground like shoot down the bus. And, <laughs> well, and so I'm kind of like and, and and like I think everybody dies except for Rob Schneider and and Sylvester Stallone. And so I'm kind of like, what was the point of that of that other prisoner trying to kill? Judge Dredd, like he just like tried for a morning. second, and then it, yeah, like, it was to... it was there and done in like a second. What was the point? <laughs> well, it's to further how shitty Rob Schneider is, because there's like I count it was like four or five times where he name drops Dredd to someone that doesn't know who he is, and they're like, "Oh my god, it's fucking Dredd! Let's kill them both!" Like he just does it constantly. He did it with the sci-fi hills have eyes. <laughs> fucking people and he did it to the judges when he snuck back in the city he just like oh dread what are we gonna do dread uh dread and then everyone's like what the fuck <laughs> as harlan said the these uh these rednecks you know leadered by <laughs> herschel from the walking dead actor and he said harlan was like these are desert mcpoils <laughs> <laughs> they totally are and that was honestly so perfect like get him pa get him yeah <laughs> and one of them is like <laughs> bionic commando that like, might, he, <laughs> he looks like cyborg from teen titans a little bit yeah he's got that same kind of like half skull thing yeah, going on like way more inbred that might actually be the best part of the movie or the 800 times where sloan says i am the law i am the law and, uh, <laughs> by that point, I never broke it. the law. I am the law. The law. The law. And everyone's making fun of him for it. So, like, I guess they know, or he knows how stupid he is. <laughs> At some point, every main character comes up to him. And is like, uh, the law. Uh. <laughs> They're all the same. Like, saying it ironically. like three or four. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think they bully him? Like, they go up for happy hour, and uh, Sylvester Stallone just sits by himself at the bar, and they like throw pieces of paper at him. Probably, and he doesn't even realize that they're uh, well trolling him. Well, he has no life. They say he has of, no emotions. Job. They yeah. say he has no emotions because he had to judge his brother. <sighs> no, he had to judge his friend, but it turned out to be his brother. <gasps> oh, and one of the ways that the other what's the female judge's name? Hershey, which mm-hmm. is my parents' cat's name, so I can never unhear that. I love chocolate. All eight hundred, yeah, all eight hundred times that they say that, I'm just thinking of this fucking cat. But <laughs> she takes a after Dread gets convicted and sentenced to prison or whatever. She goes into his locker and finds a baby picture of him with parents and brings it to some guy that I guess is like. I don't know, a forgery expert, and he's like, wow, this entire picture is a fake, and they photoshopped an entire, like, family around this baby that's supposed to be dread. and then yeah, when rather they, than just... When he's like, oh, I found the real background. It's just like a laboratory. It looks like Darth Vader's chamber in Empire Strikes Back. Well, and, and I want to know, like, why did they photoshop everything around the baby rather than just insert the baby into a different picture? <laughs> That seems like a lot less work. 
Why did they well, keep was... the metadata of the old location inside the <laughs> physical picture? Yeah. That seems unrealistic. Why didn't they and just also, upload like, the pictures to his brain? Am I right? he, he also, like, you know, he, he so casually says that the picture is fake when he's, like, examining it. Like, he's, he's the forensics guy's, like, talking to, to Judge Hershey, and he's, like, and they're, like, I forget what they're saying, but he's just casually, like, yeah, I mean, it's really weird, you know, how fake this is. And she's, like, what'd you say? And he, like, is just really casually, like, yeah, it's fake. Like, 100% <laughs> of it. Like, everything outside of the baby is fucking fake. It's, like, oh, yeah, yeah and he just, like, he says it as if that's not important to know. <laughs> as if, like, as if, if she didn't say that thing before he said it was fake, he just wouldn't have brought it up at all. Nobody would have known. He would just thought to himself, oh, that's weird, and then just went on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, he wasn't going to bring it up until she said that. <laughs> How peculiar. I wish I could remember what, what made him say it, but... Um, we'll just have to watch it again. Um, I never want to watch this again. Yeah, I don't think I will. Why not? I've seen this, like, five, six times. This might have been my course, sixth time. Every movie you pick, you have seen multiple times. Like, you're just picking your favorite movies. Favorite movies. Don't throw that on me, all right? I'm oh I, like Battlefield I, Earth and Snake Eyes and Johnny Mnemonic. Okay, Mr. Spy Kids 3D. Yes, you didn't, I, you, that's a great movie. I'm okay it's with a, admitting that I love that movie. That's what that that's movie's a fucking blast. Yeah. So, so you think I'm a I'm a closeted Dread fan? Yes. And Johnny Mnemonic yeah. fan? I think you're an open Dread fan. <laughs> Not to be confused with 2012 Dread, which is amazing. I love but. Dread. The new Dread is just like night and day. It's so much better. I might legit watch that after we're done. <laughs> Same, actually. <laughs> Y'all wait for me. I've never seen it. Well, see, there. Okay, so just with those differences as well, like um, I've never read the comics either, and from my understanding, Judge Dredd never takes his helmet off, like not once ever. Um, and if he did ever take his helmet off, apparently, like you couldn't actually see his face. It was like he was behind shots or some bullshit. You never see his face. And that's one thing, like, five minutes into the movie, he's like, you're relieved, Judge, and then he takes his helmet off, and it has, like, a zoom-in of his face, and I could just, like, feel all the fanboys screaming, and just, like, <laughs> just, like, yeah. Naruto running out of the Red theater. <laughs> well, you know, I can actually see that, you know, being, like, sort of an important uh, thing to the character, you know, because that, like, kind of visually explains that, like, he is all about the job all the time, you know? He's very uh, married than... to his work. Yeah, exactly. rather than the movie just sort of telling us that, it kind of sh it kind of would kind of would show that that he doesn't have a life, you know. And like, what arrogance! It's like people know who you are, Sly Stallone. <laughs> well, maybe that was like, the reason is that they wanted to market his face oh, because absolutely. it's hard to say like, hey, check out this Sylvester Stallone movie based off of a nerdy comic book that nobody's heard of. Check out his jawline. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, they could yeah, have accentuated the jawline if it was just that protruding through the helmet, right? Well, you and can also another, see another his thing, eyes through the visor, and that pissed me off. Yeah, that was never a thing either in the new movie or the comics, as far as yeah, I can kinda, tell. Yeah, it kind of seems to defeat the purpose. And um, supposedly, judge judges aren't supposed to get their fuck on either, and uh, <laughs> uh, from the comics anyway. And um, the uh, Judge Hershey totally lays a big old smooch on him in the last few seconds of the film. Hell yeah. So that was against the rules. And he gets his Jonas Brothers purity ring out, and he's like, oh, sorry, we <laughs> sorry, we can't. I'm the law. <laughs> and then he rides off to go stomp on some thugs. <laughs> he rides off in the coolest-looking motorcycle ever, right? Oh, my God. The motorcycles. I forgot about the motorcycles. Those are, like, the ugliest fucking things ever. They're ridiculously wide. Like, uh, the, you know, it's, re it's hard enough to... to turn a motorcycle like a regular real life motorcycle you know as much as they weigh these things are like five feet wide motorcycles so like i don't even know how you could make a turn on one because if you lean to the side at all you're gonna hit the ground they're very impractical you're trying to say that it's unrealistic no not at all okay yes. That's, i was about to whew. jeez <laughs> next you're gonna say their giant nerf guns look silly <laughs> Everything is just so fucking giant. The judges love to be wide. <laughs> <laughs> they accentuate girth in all elements of their lives. In the best ways. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just so funny to me, too. Like, um, There's a few shots where 
Uh, Judge Dredd has his helmet off, his shoulders off, and it, everything's off except his spandex and his fucking ginormous boots. And, and his like, knee pads. And, like, I couldn't help Hell but yeah. laugh every time they zoomed out from him and he just saw his giant boots there. It's like, he Not was just a mention, normal like, dude wearing the Battlefield Earth boots. <laughs> and for the last, like, 20 minutes, he, he's, like, in that outfit. He's just doing, like, a power stance. He's, he's doing, like, you know, the kind of stance that's perfect for that, uh, that meme, uh, mom says it's my turn to play on the Xbox, you know? He's just, <laughs> yeah. kind, of, he's <laughs> yeah. just kind of doing that to his brother the whole time, which is actually pretty fitting. <laughs> yeah, while, um, while Rico is explaining his whole diabolical plan like he's fucking James Bond or something, he's just standing there, there like, just... Awkwardly Just with his giant too. power stance. <laughs> I imagine that's what the vocalist of Eamon Armouth does when he goes on stage. <laughs> He just stands there with like his chest out and his arms behind him. It's like a city of heroes pose. So, um, they they get ambushed by rednecks in the desert. Oh, yeah, we kind of got way off too topic. far. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, but before we even got to there, it was the best part of the movie when Rob Schneider just disappeared for like 15, 20 minutes. Oh, he yeah. was glorious. Because like at the very beginning, so let's, we'll roll it back a little bit, just a little bit. So after the the cores robot goes through. It shows Rob Schneider. They're like, yeah, you've been in prison for five years. We're going to throw you in this apartment. He goes in the apartment, and that dude that plays every shit-eating grin asshole from every 80s or 90s movie is like a game You know leader. the one. Yeah, you know the one. Uh, what's his name? James Rimmer? James Remar? Something like that? Uh, the guy from The Warriors? But uh, he's leading like this gang. And they're like, what are you doing here, bro? And then he, <laughs> it's like, uh, it's my apartment. I live here. I'm Rob Schneider. And he's like, oh, we're going to fucking you shoot do you. <laughs> we're going to keep Deuce Bigelow from happening. <laughs> so, so they were just going to like pump him full of lead. And um, this so is they start bench warmers. <laughs> yeah. Gus Buzz. So they start causing a ruckus. And then Judge Dredd shows up on the scene. And everybody's like, oh, fuck Judge Dredd. Because I guess everybody in the city knows who he is. He's like Spider-Man. Spider-Man 3, where he's just fucking famous or infamous. He, okay, so he's he's like, I mean, I mean, kind of the, the point I understand is that they're like the judges are like the Punisher, but a team of Punishers who work together for the law. The yeah. law. The law. The law. <laughs> the law. They're just yeah, super so. cops. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. But he comes in. He fucking just blows all of them away. Um, Rob Schneider, it's revealed, like, I guess he's a hacker, as you do in, <laughs> in 90s sci-fi. Yeah. And uh, he hacks into the cores robot. And I guess after the shootout, um, you know, Hershey comes up. We're introduced to her. You know, job well done. You killed 10 people. Uh, that cores robot's just, just vibing down the street. And <laughs> Stallone just, like, he stops Hershey and, and he's like, wait a minute. And I guess he fucking smells him or something. So there's not something right about this you're robot. You're under arrest. You hacked the EverQuest servers. <laughs> Five years of imprisonment. <laughs> yeah, he just drags him out of this food service robot that has like a McDonald's menu on it. And he's going to give him six months. He's like, oh, you've been out of prison 24 hours. You're going in for five fucking years. He said and you're Rob Schneider is like, Yeah. Rob Schneider was like, dude, I was just saving my own ass. You're going to give me five years? I was trying hey, to get man, away from I was a... just hanging out in a robot. <laughs> I was trying to get away from this fucking gunfight. And he's like, I don't give a fuck. I'll give a no, fuck. Not, not only does he say that he doesn't give a fuck, he's like, you could have jumped out the window. That would have been legal. Oh, no, he was like, was he's suicide, like, but I would have died. Man. That's yeah, like it's... 40 stories. <laughs> yeah, but it's legal. <laughs> yeah, he tells him he should have killed himself. Isn't suicide technically <laughs> not legal? Not in New York. The act technically oh. in New York City, the penalty for jumping off a building is death. I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> that's it's an actual law. Oh, that's still funny. Wait, in New York? Yeah. That's so like if one you survive, rules, I'm pretty sure New York doesn't have the death penalty. It's like one of those laws from. I mean, I used to look up like dumblaws.com in like eighth grade, so maybe they repealed it. I don't know, <laughs> but. <laughs> It was all these, like, shitty, antiquated laws from, uh, like, you know, 19th century that no one upholds. And one of them was that uh, the penalty for jumping off a building is death. And I'm so fairly sure I, that was New York City. So if I climb the building of, like, Mega City 1 on top of the, I guess, the stripper headquarters where they're sending out their street strippers, 
yeah. and I jump off of it and I somehow survive, I then have to die. Like, I'll get judged. Yeah, they like dunk you. You tried to kill you. yourself. This blows me away. That's going to happen. Yeah, you get frozen in carbonite. <laughs> and then like, launched into the sun. Man, that's a long way to the This is the future the that liberals want. <laughs> <laughs> We want, I want to live in a mega city. I don't know about you. Pro- probably half that city is in fucking VR playing RuneScape. It just looks like <laughs> shit. Like we've said, it's like every other like futuristic scuzzy town. Oh, and I like how Rob Schneider gets out of the taxi. And there's just like an active riot happening. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, yeah. <laughs> people like throwing <laughs> Molotovs oh. at cars, and he's just like, "What the fuck?" And they show yeah, like sweeping like- shots of him like smiling, like, "Oh, good to be home." Yeah, he like he's he's just gotten out of prison. And they're like about to drop him off back in Mega City, and he's like looking out the window, like "Wow!" at all this amazing shit. And I'm like, "You were in it?" And it like they said just a minute ago that he was only in prison for six months, and he's like looking at the city like he's never seen it before. But they've established that like everywhere outside of the city is uninhabitable. So like, what the fuck is he smiling about? Yeah, they say uninhabitable, but like, how far away is that? Because the people outside of the walls seem to be living fine. Like the desert McPoyles seem to be uh, fine. I don't. I don't know if I'd call that living fine. They were well, they're all, they're alive. They're what, habitating there. What it's kind not of uninhabitable. Milk do you think they drink? The desert McPoyles. <laughs> the best kind, my friend. They drink I don't like Mayfield or Publix or what? I don't know. So, they might have some, some kind like, of skim milk. <laughs> they have like some mutated cows in the back, like fucking Fallout Three or something. They probably have like the shitty chocolate milk they give you in school. They probably milk each other. <laughs> well, like I, I don't know what kind of mutants these are. Maybe they're self-sufficient. They can like, you know. <laughs> That's they why can, they made the they one can kid produce. A ro- yeah, the the kid that or the dude that becomes like a cyborg from Teen Titans. They're like, oh yeah, he was born out in the the cursed earth. We had to make some alterations to him. The, the cursed earth's not kind to young ones. Do you think they had him produce breast milk? Yeah. <laughs> He had like a switch on his head. <laughs> so yeah, like, they, they, is they there a milk a... setting? They like turn this crank on his head and he just like starts pouring. No, he has, he has a dial on a, on like right on the center of his forehead, and I'm pretty sure that they said that that was a dial for his anger. Yeah, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they they'd like they crank it several times, and then by the end he he goes, "You killed my pa." <laughs> Yeah, spoilers. Uh, Judge spoilers. Dredd. They get ambushed by the by the redneck uh, McPoyles in the desert, and then like they hold them hostage, and they like they tie them up by the hands and then like hang them from from some from the ceiling. They're hanging by their hands, like their feet are not touching the ground. And then like while they're talking, like Sylvester Stallone just kind of like it sh- like it, it shows like it cuts and shows just like his his wrists and up, and there's clearly like plenty of slack on the rope and he just like kind of loosely like wiggles his hand out of there like it looked like the easiest escape ever i don't know i just thought it was really dumb that like it seemed like a really obvious uh, oversight you know yeah for a family he's, he's, of cannibals. he's hanging by his hands how did he do that <laughs> for a family of cannibals you think they'd be more efficient at tying people up oh and the cannibal yeah. element which they introduce for like five seconds before these guys get killed yeah, this movie does that quite a few times, just introducing a thing and then goes nowhere. Never developed. Resolved in like a second. It. Yeah, because like really interesting. What are they Case cannibalizing? Because like, how many people wander out of the fucking city? Probably not Good many. Point. They're also and, and also to be like mega religious, I guess. Yeah, that's true. And also, um, another another good example of this movie just like dropping something right away or resolving it right away to the point where you wonder what the purpose of it was. Uh, yeah, like when. Uh, they establish uh, that, like, the forensics guy tells Judge Hershey that that picture of, of uh, Judge Dredd as a baby is photoshopped. You know, they, they explain, like, it's it's a fake picture. and then But they just leave it at that. So it's supposed to be, like, a mystery. And you're supposed to be like, man, why is it a fake picture? And then in the very next scene, uh, the Chief Justice tells Judge Dredd that he was made in a lab. It's like, what fucking, what was the point of setting that up like it was a mystery? Like... You, you resolved it <laughs> a minute a minute later. What was it's the like point? they have to keep creating random things to just stick in there to extend it. Like it's it's only an hour and a half, but Barely. you could probably wheedle this movie down by half that. It could have just been like an episode of something. Man, 
because Rob Schneider didn't need to exist. He did literally nothing to get Judge Dredd out of the city. He didn't get Judge Dredd in trouble. He's not he's the just... plot point for that. He doesn't sneak him back into the city. He literally yeah, is if, if 100% anything, he just... useless. Yeah, he, he just slows him down. If he was not there, there wouldn't have been a single difference in the movie. There's a fucking bag yeah. on Dredd's hip the whole time. Well, even Ain't like it. the most annoying, annoying characters have some something they do. Even Jar Jar Binks fucking took them somewhere. But like, <laughs> he was and just he became getting... a general. <laughs> yeah, he became a senator. And uh, <laughs> Senator Binks. He held Banks. office. <laughs> <laughs> what did Rob Schneider do? Not fucking shit. He really didn't like i mean it, he literally just slows him down when they're like running through that tunnel and the fire is about to like uh you know blast them out and he like trips and and judge dread has to go back for him like he's literally just like slowing him down and, yeah. and, and, and that again that's the point where i asked like or i think around the time that they were like fighting the the rednecks and they were trying to escape is the point where i asked like why did these two team up because they were clearly at odds with each other when they're on the bus you know on the way to prison and then, like, and then right before they do escape, uh, you know, from being captured by the hillbillies, um, you know, like, uh, Rob Schneider tries to ditch Judge Dredd and leave him to be eaten or, or killed by the hillbillies. And then two seconds later, they're working together. And I'm like, what ha- what ha- why did that change? Like, I don't understand why these two characters are suddenly buddies and, you know, on this adventure together. Yeah, and, like, after they escape from the cannibals, um, Judge Dredd is like, I think we can get back in the city through these vents here, but, you know, there's a fire trap, blah, 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 you know, plot yeah. and shit like that. And, uh, this, I think this might have actually pissed me off more than anything else. And I don't know why. Like, as they're running through the tunnel, Rob Schneider trips. This is a grown fucking man, knowing he's about to die. He trips in a tunnel and doesn't try to pick himself up, doesn't try to keep moving. Instead, he calls for Judge Dredd to come back and physically pick him up to run the fuck out of the tunnel and not be engulfed in flame and fucking die. He really is pretty much like a Jar Jar Binks <laughs> in this movie. Like, he just... He's worse. He's, yeah, like, he's, worse. he's like he's there to, like, really the only purpose he serves in this movie is just to, to attempt uh, comedic relief. But it, it it is only ever awkward. Like, it's it, he never made me even, like... <laughs> breathe out of my nose because i thought something was funny like, like i said i think he's <laughs> supposed to be like the quote-unquote conscience because he's showing dread a direct mirror of like hey man it happened to me it happened to you too like this is why the law can't be blind and everything even though we okay. never really delve into the already kind of fucked up premise of these mega cops that are judge jury and executioner and everyone just kind of seems to think that's cool it's like what that's okay that's, so that's terrible that's... That's like that, an actual that, fascist police state. So that is, the, yes, that is my biggest problem with this movie. Um, skipping ahead here a little bit. So, yeah, Judge Dredd just doesn't change in this movie. I mean, like, yeah, he gets framed. And then he also, you know, uh, kind of finds out that, uh, you know, he shouldn't, he, kind of, he realizes he shouldn't have, uh, you know, convicted uh, Rob Schneider. And so you think For he's going nothing. on this journey... Yeah, like, you think he's going on this journey of realizing, like, oh, shit, uh, like, we are the bad guys, like, we should not be enforcing the law this way. But then at the end of the movie, he just goes back to doing what he was doing before, just just yeah. being Judge Dredd again. He doesn't yeah, change at all. Th- like he a thug street cop. Well, yeah, that's yeah, another like, thing. Yeah, like, he just unlearns the lesson that he spent the whole movie learning that, you well, know, I don't like, think he did learn judges it. are bad. Because, just... like, what Justin said, I think the Rob Schneider character is there for us to give us, like... Uh, understanding into it because Judge Dredd doesn't acknowledge any of the shit that he says at all. Yeah, he just like, like of like the law is unjust or whatever, and then like he literally says nothing or does nothing to the contrary. <laughs> and then Rob Schneider, I don't know. I guess it's, he's just there <laughs> so you don't think Judge Dredd is one hundred percent a dick and just ninety nine percent a dick. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I love the part uh, when they're on the bus and like he explains like. Uh, he explains to Judge Dredd, he's like, you made a mistake when you convicted me. And and Dredd's like, the law doesn't make mistakes. And yeah, he just like, says shit like that through the whole thing. And, 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 then, and then Schneider's like, well, then how do you explain you being here? And then and then Sylvester Stallone's face just, like, drops, and he's like, holy shit. He just glowers. Shit. Like, yeah, he never acknowledges he any just... of it. He's just kind of like, Ugh. 
Yeah, he didn't yeah, say anything. Yeah, that's the most you get is, is him just dropping his expression just being like, holy shit, yeah. Rob Schneider's right. But then that's, that's it. He doesn't acknowledge it beyond that. Yeah, then Rob Schneider name drops him and almost gets him shanked. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All yeah. the other but, uh, two characters that matter, like Hershey and Rob Schneider, they just kind of project what they think Judge Dredd should be onto him, and he just kind of reacts neutrally to all of it. Like, I never had any emotions. That wasn't on. That wasn't because you were made in a lab. That was on you. And then he doesn't respond. And then like, hey man, the law does isn't always just man. And then he doesn't respond to that. And like you said, he doesn't get anywhere by the end yeah. what they try to do because uh the society or whatever realizes that he was framed they try to make him like the top judge or the top whatever yeah chief justice general yeah general rank of this police force and he's just like nah i'm a street judge yeah he turns and he it just, down so he's, he's literally leaves, back to where he started at the beginning shit. of the movie yeah <laughs> like nothing changes that's that's my biggest problem with this movie it's just like the whole journey was pointless yeah, Rob Schneider's Maybe pointless. Bad. There's no character development at all either, and like you. There, um, that, well, that's the thing is that there kind of is, even if it's poorly done. But what character development there is, what arc there is, is just forgotten by him at the end of the movie. He's like, all right, yeah, I'm just gonna go continue to do my thing. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> well, this isn't my problem anymore, so I'm back to I'm going back to the way it was. And at this point, Rob Schneider should have been fucking gone. <laughs> like, I know yeah, he's been he's been shot like, and he's just like I need help I'm Rob Schneider I'm funny like I know you said he should have left him at the rednecks but I think like at the very latest when they snuck back in the city and he just had to pick him off the ground like a fucking asshole and then they got into the city he should have left him there he's like okay we're back here you're fucking useless get out of here yeah, I never want to fucking see you again <laughs> And that should be the end of it. But he hangs out with Rob Schneider for the entire rest of the movie. He's with him more than no Hershey. Reason. Do you there's think no they had Rob Schneider it. in there to make Sylvester Stallone seem more physically dominant? Because Rob Schneider's a pretty small guy. I looked it up. He's 5'3". <laughs> I think Sil- so. Sylvester Stallone's not that big. But, like, Sylvester's just towering over him. And it makes you think, like, oh, is he... Is he supposed to be some, like, Master Chief mega giant? <laughs> yeah, I think he wants to portray himself that way. Because, like, with Rob Schneider being, like, fucking 5'3 or something, and then Sylvester having his gigantic boots, he ends up being, like, two <laughs> feet taller than him. Like, those are thick boots, man. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> so, what would you guys yeah. give this? Mm, we I'd, must, give it a, I'd give it a four. We must deep dig deep inside ourselves before we rate it. Um, four. I'm just gonna <laughs> say a, I'm gonna say a four two, but just barely. A four like a four like two. If it, it, if it if it were any worse, uh, it'd be a three. Well, that's how that it's works. Just, um, just barely a four. Shut up, Justin. <laughs> it does I mean. have the entertainment value. At least you guys weren't bored, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad this movie's. It, it, well, it was I funny guess, in that it had like the stupid, shitty one-liners. <laughs> I guess. Oh yeah, this movie is ripe with with Judge Dredd and people being like, "Court's adjourned," and the jury's still out on that one and shit like that. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I'm the law, like eight hundred times. Oh yeah, and and yeah, Judge Dredd like has a thing. Like he specifically has a thing for saying, "I knew you'd say that." <laughs> Oh yeah, the, like the other the other judges make that. like court and judge puns, but he's the only one that says, "I knew you'd say that" like five times throughout the movie. Yeah, it's just over and over. Um, but I guess I would give it a five. It's enjoyable enough. Nah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that's right. A five. I'm gonna give it a big fat five, because okay, I guess well, it's it's technically better than Battlefield <laughs> Earth. That's not hard. And it's, it's more enjoyable, yeah. and it's more Lobar. well done, and I think I gave that like a three or four, and if I did that, then I have to give this a five, I feel like. Uh, I want to say another problem I have with this is that, um, so Rico is the villain of the movie, and yeah, he's, he's uh, Judge Dredd's brother, uh, and apparently they used to be uh, best friends, um, I think, but that is all before the movie begins. So these two characters... Judge Dredd and Rico, they don't meet face to face until the last like 20 or 30 minutes of the movie. So to me, there's like no emotional stakes. Like, I don't care if the movie tells me that they used to be close. 
these two have never interacted as far as I as far as I have seen. Yeah, I have no reason to be invested in this fight. Yeah. Other than um, him telling Hershey at the beginning, like, oh, I had to judge him. He had to judge his best friend, and that's why he doesn't have emotions. And they've never seen each other until now, or the climax. Of yeah, the movie. and I just couldn't give less of a shit. Why not? It was emotionally charged. Was it? No, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, four, four out of ten is not good. It was good. Okay. Subpar. But speaking of how not good it was, what's the good thing about it? <laughs> I guess uh, I would say I think the sets looked really good in the beginning more than the ends. Not the Judge Hall. Basically the sci-fi city. I thought that shit looked pretty cool with all the cyber goss and everything. Uh, but my favorite thing was the robot. Um, Rico had this robot lackey that he stole from a pawn shop. It's like a 60-year-old relic type thing. And it's basically his bodyguard, and it's full 100% practical effects, and it looks mm-hmm. fucking dope. It does, <laughs> yep. honestly. It's it I'd moves agree. really cool, and it's fucking awesome. It's I love really that. Yeah, I th- I thought, I thought, That's another I thought reason the robot, for the five. Yeah, I thought the robot looked pretty good, um, all things considered. Uh, his movement looked a little janky, but you know, let's take what I can get. He's an old um, robot. He was he was commissioned in like 2080. Whoa. Well, weird to think about back in the day <laughs> <laughs> right. uh i would say um this movie kind of knows what it is and you know make no mistake that doesn't mean it's good uh you know because it still does what it's trying to do in a shitty way but uh i mean i don't think this movie takes itself too seriously um and i think i think sylvester stallone was good for the role <laughs> Uh, I guess that's it. <laughs> Wait till you that's see what... Carl Urban play it right. <laughs> that was really close to backhanded comments. Oh, Sylvester uh, was okay, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a pass, though. I'm gonna give it a pass. For how <laughs> dumb this movie is, I honestly think it looks pretty fucking good for 1995. For 70% of it, there's a couple, like I said, a few really rough parts, and you're like, oh, that green screen. But, yeah. again, you have to... You know, two years after Jurassic Park, four years after Terminator 2, I'm like, this looks pretty good. There's movies yeah. that came out 10, 15 years later that looked way shittier than this, in my opinion. So that's, and that's not a backhanded compliment. I think it looks legitimately good. Yeah, go. I think, uh, like, the only scene, uh, or the only sequence that looked, like, legitimately bad was, yeah, that, that chase on the, um, on the flying motorcycle, mm-hmm. uh, like especially the the very first shot of that scene uh just looked horrendous but aside from that uh i think uh, the movie looks really good um its special effects and such are 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 pretty good for the time like they had a couple 3d rendered cars or these vehicles that are flying around that were you know composited into the scene but since everything looks so jagged and so like angular it kind of fits so mm-hmm. even though you know it's a 3D model, it's not like a real thing. It's like, oh, that looks appropriate. Yeah. So the weird art style kind of worked in its favor in that regard because it made the shitty computer graphics look better just because yeah. it was blocky inherently. Yeah, the main thing <laughs> is that the characters... Is, I, I should have said, instead of the art style, like the character designs are atrocious. The art design is... It's okay. Like the city looks yeah. fine, like you said. Like everything looks cool except for anything related to the actual judges. <laughs> Like the last <laughs> shot the where he's characters. just kind of standing in the middle of like the mega city or whatever, like that's cool. That looks pretty dope. Yeah, that was a that was a decent end for sure. Mm-hmm. But shit, you guys got anything else to say about it? I know it's action packed. I have trivia. If you guys want to hear it, oh, let's, let's hear, hear some, some trivia. Trivials. Uh, yeah, I pulled up the IMDb on this, and I was surprised uh, how much there was. There was a lot of uh, pretty interesting stuff on this movie. Um, Here we go. I picked trivia. some of my favorites. Um, in later interviews, uh, Sylvester Stallone said he felt the film was supposed to be a comedy slash action film, and demanded rewrites to make it even more comedic. So you can thank him for pretty much probably all the Rob Schneider stuff. Uh, the director and screenwriter, however, had intended a darker, more satirical, satirical approach, uh, which led to many difficulties behind the scenes. So they're uh, trying to make it like RoboCop, how it was like a dark satire. Well, apparently, uh, 
the release of RoboCop pushed this movie back a lot because of how similar uh, it was turning out to be. They were like, people are going to say we ripped it off. Actually, I didn't even uh, think so. That, that so they had to push this movie like a back a lot. Version of RoboCop. Oh, RoboCop, yeah. so good. Uh, Sylvester Stallone had never heard of Judge Dredd until he was offered the role. <laughs> uh, that's, no one did. That's shocking. <laughs> like little Timmy that went to get comics every Wednesday did, <laughs> but nobody else. Yeah, only the kids that were being pushed you. into lockers at that year were even knew who Judge Dredd was. Fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, director Danny Cannon was so disheartened over his constant creative disputes with Sylvester Stallone that he swore he would never again work with another self-absorbed actor. He also claimed that the final version was completely different from the script due to the changes that he made. I would have liked uh, to see in the original, like how they were wanting it to be. Yeah, is, is there like a director's cut of this? I mean, I guess we got something even better. We got the 2012 movie. Yeah, I'll have to watch that sometime. Or maybe I should just read the book. Hmm. Uh, watch, the see. Movie. watch the movie uh, so director great. Danny Cannon was apparently not allowed on set for the post-production reshoots so yeah uh, a lot of behind the scenes <laughs> shit um, yes. I'd be very interested <laughs> to see a director's cut of this movie so he didn't have enough star things. power to be like no fuck that actor that he had to basically like just bitch out and do whatever they wanted uh, this one's pretty pretty weird uh, Christopher Walken turned down the role of Rico Judge Dredd give me the wrong tone <laughs> Fresh off of Pulp Fiction, Christopher Walken. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I guess That's he awesome. does. He does look weird, like he could be a clone. I, yeah, he could do that, but he does. He's not like intimidating, though. Joseph, you destroyed your life for the law. I destroyed the law for my life, Joseph. <laughs> I am the law. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the law. I hope you enjoyed my Christopher Walken impression. He held That's the ball good, in his man. ass for three years. Uh, this one uh, felt very um, therapeutic to read. Uh, Rob Schneider got banged up while shooting. On his first day on set, <laughs> on his first day on set, he fell down a flight of stairs. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Did you want to get it on film? I don't think that so. That was his audition tape. <laughs> I feel like that was perfect. Because that's what he's going to do through the whole movie. Yeah, with how annoying he was in this movie, it was nice to know that, you know, some, some good came out of it. He's going to trip us down into box office dead, boy. <laughs> All right, last one. Uh, the double whammy feature on the lawgiver, that's the name of the, the gun uh, that the judges use, uh, was also referenced in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, <laughs> as a finishing move. Wow. <laughs> You know, I never drew the two together. So I watched the Power Rangers movie a lot. Like <laughs> Earlier this, this afternoon. That's right. Shit, we should, That's we right. should add that to our... Somebody should add that to their list. Yeah. You know who's it's going on. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I you yours. Your own. All right, it's on the wheel. All right. I think that's all I got. Yeah. Speaking of the wheel, what you got for us, dude? Let's... Uh, it's Justin's turn. It's my Speaking mind. of Justin, what movie you got for <laughs> us, dude? Manually picking my movies, I'm going to choose <laughs> Bird Box on Netflix. Ah, oh, yay. God. I'm I, excited. You know what? I really wanted to watch that a second time. Well, <laughs> you're going to get to. I've watched it one and a half times. I watched it once, like... Or I watched half of it extremely drunk. And the second time yeah, I watched man. it and wished I was extremely drunk. All right. I'm well, excited. Yeah, same. Let's go. Let's get open that bird box. All right, <laughs> gentlemen, Judge Smith, Judge Ivester. Court is adjourned. That was my. I was gonna. <laughs> I could tell he wanted to say it. Uh, I knew he wanted to say it. Oh, Justin, you asshole! Why'd you do that? Man, get edged. Fuck. <laughs> you trash, bro. <laughs> Hold on, you dig on multi versus? Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! Oh, 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 oh,